We learned last week football great Frank Gifford was suffering at the time of his death from the effects of concussions suffered decades earlier. It was just the latest revelation about a growing concern. There's even a major new motion picture on the subject. ABC 7's Dwayne Lindo joins us with more. Dwayne. Well, Alan, you hear about it more and more every year. Athletes suffering long-term damage from contact sport head injuries. One jarring collision can change everything in an athlete's life, especially when it affects the brain. Repetitive head trauma chokes the brain. A new movie opening up at the end of the year, bound to be used as a wake-up call. Sends Frank Gifford flying around it. In 1960, NFL Hall of Famer Frank Gifford was on the receiving end of perhaps the most memorable blow to the head in NFL history, knocking the running back out cold and out of football for an entire year. Pathologists diagnosed the late running back with chronic traumatic encephalopathy. There's the stop of the forward progress. In and more recently, St. Louis quarterback Case Keenum was slammed to the ground during a pass attempt with his head crashing onto the AstroTurf, but still stays in the game. Local doctor George Roselle has seen this before. But I think that the NFL should be doing much more, much more to support treatment. Last year, Roselle was a principal investigator for a research study of retired NHL and NFL athletes who are suffering symptoms of post-concussion syndrome. We've been able to establish through our own uh, research that the post-concussive syndrome can be treated and um, we can uh, hopefully prevent uh, a lot of the, the drastic consequences down the line. But Dr. Roselle says the focus should be to make these sports safer. The newly developed Major League Football with Lakewood Ranch as their home base says they're doing just that. And we're certainly looking at every angle and every possibility and every medical advancement that we can get into our league. And are looking into other organizations in the future to make the league as safe as it can possibly be. We invite those people, come to us. Let's see what protocols you have. Let's see if we can make the game safer. And according to Roselle, the focus to make the sport safer should start first on the youth level. As many of these players start in youth football, and uh, that's a particular concern because the brain is still developing. The brain doesn't really mature till the mid to late 20s. So that's not a good time to get a brain injury. Now some local high school coaches are recognizing the seriousness of concussions, including the head coach here at Palmetto High School. He's looking to reduce injury by taking the head out of tackling. And it actually starts you know, at the youth level with, you know, with a heads up mentality. And, and really, we've been doing that for years. You know, we've always taught, no matter whether it was blocking or tackling, to make sure that the head was in a position of strength. You know, head up, um, you know, trying to not ever have your, your, your head down. You know, every coach teaches a, a different target area on, on the body. Techniques such as wrapping up the thighs and roll tackle. Marino says many of these techniques usually trickle down from the professional level. You know, we as high school coaches and youth coaches, we go to clinics, and so we're always hearing different different perspectives of how to tackle, how to block. High school football accounts for 47% of all reported sports concussions, with 33% of concussions occurring during practice. These numbers prompt Marino and other coaches to err on the side of caution. We, all of our kids are baseline tested, so if there's any slight variation from their normal brain activity, uh, when they go through the testing, uh, then they're, 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 they're out for at least a week, if not 10 days to two weeks. And just like the NFL, a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit is a penalty in high school football. You know, I think the referees are doing a better job. You know, the rules have changed. Uh, they've been adapted to be, you know, more proactive in preventing um, not just head injuries, but, but other types of, you know, physical injuries throughout a game. Now, Alan, despite the NFL's effort to make the game a little safer, you're now starting to see a trend of NFL players retiring early for fear of post-concussion syndrome, such as Chris Borland and Patrick Willis, both from the San Francisco 49ers. It would be interesting to see and find out how many parents would restrict their kids from playing high school football for that same reason. All right, Dwayne, thanks a lot.